Welcome. Today, we're going to be reading Poppy Seed, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Being a big brother or sister is a special job. There were many delights in the land of serendipity, natural delights. Trees sang in the mountain breezes that blew so gently there. Clouds slipped across skies, warning of early spring storms that sometimes blew down into the valleys, dressing all with a mantle of snow. Early spring snows, drifting snowflakes that dusted the meadows with a blanket of white, sometimes even tickled the nose of a bunny who chose to scamper about, leaving footprints for others to follow. In this land of serendipitous delights was a farm, a simple farm indeed. White board fences, neatly ordered, bordered this farm to hold some of the creatures in and others out. Here, winter finally slipped away, and beneath the mantle of snow were clover and daisies which popped up their heads as if to welcome spring. In the barnyard, ducks, geese, and old mother hens busily bustled about, arranging this and that, food for spring, and maybe a picnic or two when summer came. Here, too, was a once mighty horse, still mighty with the pride of memory, but long since past the age of plowing and pulling. He, too, felt the call of the springtime breezes with their tease of things to come. But the best of the farm and all who lived here, and the best to me, were the cows that mooed and mowed in the meadow. Big brown eyes that could cause a grown man to cry if he took the time to look, blinked in wonder at the springtime meadow. For what had been fields of snow the day before were now beginning to bloom. They stood there, great heads lifted high above the fence, sniffing the air and breathing all the newness about them. Then, one by one, they marched to the meadow to taste firsthand the sweetness of spring. Of this herd of cows, there were three a bit more special than others. More special because the mother, Mary Ellen, and the father, Tinker, had calved a late winter child, a calf newborn. Late winter calves are rare, rare, for normally all calves are born in the middle of spring. They name their calf after the winter poppy that grew, and because he was but a child, they simply called him poppy seed, the beginning of new flowers to come. Poppy seed had the best of the best, for being an only child in an adult herd can be a wondrous blessing. The bulls would butt him in great mock battle. The other cows would laugh at his antics as he chased a butterfly on his tail, round and round like a whirling dervish. Even when Poppy Seed got into trouble, the others never scolded or punished him. One day, he even tried to eat the greener grass that grew on the other side of the fence. Unable to clamber between the rails, he tried to climb over the top. As is always the case in these kinds of situations, he did nothing more than get stuck. He was a mugwump, if you would, with his mug on one side and his wump on the other. Two of the bulls and three of the cows pulled and tugged, and with a thump, his wump and mug were on the same side once again. But, like all things, even the barnyard changes. With the warmth of spring and the promise of summer yet to come, the other cows suddenly became edgy, irritable, if you like. Now, Poppy Seed had always been allowed to take lunch when he liked from any cow bearing milk, and this day he stopped, as was his wont, and began to sip a bit. But this day, unlike the others, he was rebuffed and shooed away. Try though he might, none of the cows wished to share their milk. One of the cows, irritated by his insistence, even flapped him in the face with her bushy tail. Bawling, he ran about the meadow, seeking his mother and father. Oh, mother, he cried, the cows won't share their milk. Worse of worse, they don't even want me around. There, there, mooed his mother. It isn't you, my little poppy seed, for this is the time of the others. Others, asked poppy seed, totally confused. You mean to say that I am not the only one? Yes, said his father. For in this time of late spring, the other babies will be calved, and then you will not be the only little one. You'll have brothers, sisters, and cousins galore, and even more. And the others came, that day, and the next, and the next. The meadow was filled with the anxious cries of newborn calves as they were dropped into the middle of life. 
Poppy Seed looked on in wonder at this miracle of birth. One moment there was one very fat cow, and the next there were two cows, one a very tired mama and the other a wobbly-legged newborn calf. With the birth of the others came a great change in the meadow and a greater change in Poppy Seed's life. Before, when he would spin around chasing butterflies on his tail, the cows and the bulls of the herd would laugh at his antics, but now they paid him little mind. In fact, they even called him a bother and told him to go away. It seemed that the little calves were more special. It seemed that they were all cuter than he. One of the cows even told him that he was an older brother now, not a baby, and that he should make himself useful and help, not hinder. With the rebuff ringing in his ears and a tear in his eyes, he wandered from the herd, which didn't even notice that he had walked away. It was then, in the confusion of his self-pity, that Poppy Seed decided to run away. He clambered upon the fence, and though for a time he was stuck, no bull or cow came to his rescue. Oh, cows, he grumbled as he picked himself out of the mud on the other side of the fence. I don't need that old herd. Maybe I should become a horse and plow the fields. That will make me useful. With that, he trotted from the meadow to the old sun-bleached barn to find a harness and a plow to pull. Once in the barn, he pulled and tugged on the harness and reins until, with a crash, they fell about his neck. With the gear tangled and wrapped about him, there was no way for him to walk, let alone pull a plow. He would have been there to this very day had not the old farm horse found him in the mess that he had made. Laughing in the neighing way that horses laughed, the old horse pulled the gear off Poppy Seed's back. Put that back, cried the little calf, for if I am to become useful, I must carry the harness and learn to pull the plow. And why, asked the old horse, would you ever want to pull a plow? It was then that Poppy Seed, with tears in his eyes, told the old horse the story of the calving in the meadow. Ah, little calf, consoled the horse. Being a big brother isn't so bad. The little ones need to have bigger ones to look up to. And the little ones need to be shown what to eat and where to eat it. And the little ones need to be taught not to climb the fence. The little ones need an older brother to love. All this made little sense to Poppy Seed, and it seemed that he was not even wanted in the barn by the horse. Sadly, with head held low, he went back over the fence and once again into the meadow. It was there that he bumped, quite innocently, innocently into one of the l little calves who was trying to eat a weed. Oh, don't eat that, Poppy Seed sighed. Weed tastes like dirt. Here, eat the clover and the grasses, for they are sweet to eat. He patiently showed the little calf all of the sweets to eat, and it wasn't long before he was surrounded by a small herd of little ones looking up to him in admiration. Unlike the older cows, the little calves didn't tell him to be useful, for he was. And more than that, Poppy C was loved for what he was, an older, bigger brother. If into your life the others come, brought to life by your father and mother, just remember the calf Poppy Seed and how he became an older brother. The end. And that's it for today's episode of Storytime with Jen. We will see you tomorrow.